Fala, galera! Rodrigo Flauzino na área. Hoje o programa é especial. Temos a presença, tivemos a oportunidade de conversar com o grande Roland Grapple, guitarrista, lendário guitarrista do Halloween. Ele ficou muito tempo na banda, depois ele foi seguindo aí a carreira com a banda Master Plan. Então ele veio aqui para o Brasil fazer shows, alguns shows com os músicos locais e a gente teve a oportunidade de conversar com ele no Sesc Santo André. Antes de conferir, não deixa de dar aquele joinha, se inscrever, lembre-se do Apoia-se. Você pode vir aqui apresentar um vídeo comigo, de repente vir assistir, já pensou vem o Roland Grapple, enfim. Dá uma olhada na descrição do vídeo e bora lá! First of all, Roland Grapple. Roland Grapple, first of all, thank you very much for joining us here. Uh, first time you playing with a local band here. How is it going so far? Uh, local musicians. It's not a band, so we are, we are, I think, two guys play together. But it's beautiful. It's like I came here last week and we had one rehearsal only. And it uh, was really nice, so I felt like, wow, I was surprised to be honest. Good, good playing, not many mistakes, nothing. And uh, so today is our fourth show. And uh, one or two days ago we talked about maybe adding one extra song, and you heard it already at the sound check. So we played the song today, the first time, back from my life. Yeah. Nice song. Master play song, right? Yes. And what do you usually bring with you for this gig? So you bring your guitar, one guitar, two guitars, you bring battles, all this work? Um, I try to make everything very, very uh, cheap as possible. I don't want to have any extra luggage, which you always have to pay when you're flying. So I bring just my pedals, my cables, and uh, power supply, so I don't need to buy batteries. And my guitar, only one guitar, always. Do you like those uh, camp simulators and that stuff like Camper and Fractal? What do you think of the what kind of equipment? Uh, I tried my Camper, I have one in, in the studio and I tried it live two times and the band said please don't use it. And uh, I like the, the old school kind of. I love my Camper, I'm using 90% the Camper in the studio but not, not live uh, so far. So I like I always want to go for festivals or for gigs here. I ask this, uh, do you have a PV5150-655 or the new Eddie Van here, which I didn't see any here so far. Um, I also like rectifiers, these are movies. The old ones, uh, the more modern ones as well. I, I like most of them. And uh, so whatever I get, but I'm always telling, please, no Marshall. Because master plan uh, sound doesn't work with a Marshall, and I love Marshall, and I have still three in my studio. But uh, when, I, when I want to, uh, my old sound with a Stratocaster, then I use a Marshall, and uh, it's more like Ingvi or Richard Blackmore kind of sound. So like Pam Kings, all the solo parts I used, that, you know the album we made. Yes. Uh, I used all the solo parts uh, with my old setup, and Stratocaster, um, my Booster pedal, like Ingvi's using DOD 250, uh, noise gate, that's it, and my old Marshall from Halloween year days. And uh, the funny thing is, people even doesn't hear the difference. You know, sometimes they say, when you play the Stratocaster again, I said, here on the last album. <laughs> Not the rhythm, but all the solo parts, and never leave us. Yeah, that's a question I have. Why do you change? Because I remember you. Uh, as a, like a big Stratocaster player back there 20 years ago, what made you change from Stratocaster to Les Pauls? Uh, when I was young, I started uh, with Les Pauls, to be honest. Uh, I had an Ivanus Les Paul. Before I had a cheap guitar, which I don't even know the company. And then when I had my first own money from, from my parents or some work I had, uh, I think I was 16, I bought, I bought this Ivanus and uh, I still have it. And uh, later, I had an Explorer, Ivanus, Gibson was too expensive. But then I had Gibson, Explorer, so I had always Gibson guitars. And the funny thing is, I was a big Scorpions fan and I liked to have lots of Stratocaster. So I bought a Stratocaster from 1978 and it was horrible sounding, I remember. I never had a good sound with this. And I needed a white one with white maple board because 
because I loved only journals and Scorpions. And, uh, but then Eddie Van Heeren came in 78, 79, and I, I changed everything on the guitar. So I made humbucker pickups and I made everything by my own. And uh, after three times totally changing this guitar, it was totally broken. So I, I just put it on the wall and that's it. I didn't, wasn't able to play anymore. It was horrible guitar. Um, when I joined Halloween later, um, I had, uh, they said they, they can give me um, like a deal with a guitar label, BC Rich. Uh, when you see some old pictures, maybe you find it uh, on the first tour in America. I played BC Rich guitar with some lightning on it. And it was that 89? Uh, 89, yeah. 89. And I played this guitar one or two years, but then on the, on the first uh, album, we did Pink Bubbles. I used mainly my Valley, my Valley R, which was a Stratocaster, um, but uh, it was a Gibson scale. It wasn't it was a really small Stratocaster. So we used it basically this guitar, and uh, I don't remember if I had a real. But then I felt so much in love, like uh, Ingrid Monson at that time, that I said, I, I want this guitar again, you know. And I bought some, I think. People see on the Pink Bubbles video, um, Kids of the Century, my first uh, Stratocaster, which is an Ingrid model from 96, like, uh, no, not 96. Bullshit. We made this album in 93. 92, 93. Oh, yeah, so I, had, I, had, I, think, I think it's an 88 model, one of the first models of Ingrid Mark's Ingrid. Yes. So you, really you mentioned uh, that you decided to go for last pose, and especially the amps, the 5150, <coughs> for a heavier sound. Later, sound. much later. With, with the master plan, but uh, did you, uh, probably, it was that uh, the case you left Halloween to uh, play uh, heavier sound? No, I just fell in love on the dark white. We changed everything, we used Mesa Boogie, and uh, we used my, my Les Paul from my studio. We put this down tuning strings on, extra this trick. So it's like a tuning, like the seven string, but it has six strings. You know, so the high E string is, is not there. So basically, I, I, I don't like to play seven string, but I make this trick. Roisy showed me this, and then since then I use this as Paul in the studio. And uh, so when, when we went out of, of the band Halloween, so I just decided to stay in this kind of heavy, heavier sound, which I felt in love with. And, uh, so I bought, I had a blacklist ball already, which I used in Halloween sometimes on Still We Go. I remember the rhythm part. People thought it's a Stratocaster. And you see, people doesn't even hear the difference. And uh, so my blacklist ball is my main guitar in the studio, but I'm not using it live anymore. So this is why my live guitar now. And it's, it's around, both have the same age from 1976. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, people, people hate. Some hating these uh, pickups, but I like EMGs somehow. I love love it. I love EMGs in the humbucker, but single coils I, I prefer not to use. You know, I, I like Dimasio or Simon Duncan or something. I don't understand uh, one thing is that you were in a very important part of Halloween history uh, because uh, things you've done, uh, writing stuff and all important albums uh, is what kept the band together and going after Michael Keats clap. So I don't understand, why don't you uh, keep kept going with the band? Why did you decide to leave? Uh, I was fine, I didn't decide. We came from the tour, I said goodbye to the guys at the airport, hugging each other, saying uh, say hi to your wives, we see us soon. And I came home, had an email, I'm fine, I didn't see I, I saw some recent comments, harsh comments on you uh, by Andy Darius. I don't understand why. Would, uh, would you be interested by maybe joining the band for a United tour, this kind of tour they, they're doing? Uh, which harsh comment? Like you were kind of a traitor or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, they said, not me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Andy said I'm a betrayer. I don't care what he's saying, but I don't know why he's saying it. I don't know the reason. Um, I thought we have a good relationship because I met him uh, three years ago, four years ago, twice. We spoke on both days together, like four hours. And 
I'm smiling to them. I'm not. I'm not blaming them that I was fired, and uh, but they still have problems with me. I don't know why. You know, and also the people know me. I'm, I'm a nice guy drinking beer. Only that's it. Yeah. I agree. I, I, I'm very honored that you are here talking to us. And I, I have a question. One more. Uh, in 96, 98, you came here to play with Halloween and yeah. also for big festivals. You, uh, you have very memory, uh, funny story of, of that time. Uh, yeah, first it was very exciting to go first time to South America and then Brazil. And then this big stadium with 55,000 people. And uh, I was there. Yeah. Yeah, I was there as well. <laughs> Eric, he, he's here, who's uh, recording here, was great, there too. Great, great. So I had um, good memories, of course. Uh, the crowd looked amazing. But again, there was uh, some wrong decisions from the management made in, in my, my terms of using... They said, we can save some money. Can we, I, I come with you as a tour manager. And there was my old role, which worked like the first years in Halloween. And he didn't know I changed the tuning of some songs or guitars. And he said, your roadie stays in England and I come with you and I have you then on stage. Okay, this is fine, we can save some money. And I said, okay. What was happening was I had the wrong tuning on stage. He gave me the guitar and I was so... You know, the Stratocaster has this floating uh, tremolo system. And if you want to quick change it, tuning to, to a half step down or up, it's not working. So he tuned it quick, 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 and I was, I think, out of tune uh, on one song totally. So I don't like this. When you have 55,000 people and you have one chance to make something good, that's why you see sometimes my face is like, like stiff, you know, not so happy like I normally am. And, and I said, fuck, why I said yes? Why my role you stays at home, you know? He was so brilliant, he always made my guitar good sounding. So that was a bad memory I had. But in general, it was nice to be there. And, uh, yeah, still like the pictures to see the videos. What about Master Plan? The last album was uh, some uh, your, song, your songs with Halloween that you recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have any plans for a new album? Yeah, so I'm in the middle of the songwriting process for a long time already, but now I'm more uh, consequent saying yes, we are working on a new album. And I'll try to finish this uh, to summer, end of the summer. It should come out, out this year. So September or maybe second half of the year, something like that. Is the same guys that recorded with you the last album? Yeah, or yeah. same lineup. Same lineup. Maybe I'm singing a little bit more. Really? Yeah, because I... I heard you're, you're a good singer. I don't know, some people maybe not agree. <laughs> But I love to sing, and I did it on my first solo album. And uh, one guy made a stupid comment from Germany. He works on the biggest magazine, one of the biggest magazines, Rock Hard Magazine. And that 50 50 compliments, you know. Yes, he's great. I didn't expect it. And that's what I wanted to, to show the people. Not analyzing how good I am or how bad or, or how far, you know. It's just I wanted to show. I'm, I started singing and guitar playing at the same time. And now, the last three years, I'm really, really was singing in the studio or in the, in the car. I have always long travel to, to the airports, three hours one direction. And I'm always singing in the car. You know. I have ideas, I'm recording ideas. I have tons of vocal melodies now, which I never had, because normally I wrote it on the keyboard or on the guitar my songs. But now maybe something is more interesting coming out in the future. What is your inspiration for singing? What are your, your favorite singers? Uh, to be honest, uh, Mikey Kiske is one of my favorites. Too. Yeah, I think he's, he's just brilliant. Um, to get the sound, many people can, can try and, and imitate, but he makes it in a very unique, soft way. You know, he's not making it too brutal, like <coughs> or something. He, he thinks, I, I, I remember he told me, I, I said to him, how do you do this? You know? And he was like, yeah, I'm singing very quiet. <laughs> people think he's a loud singer, but he's not. So it's like, uh, I don't know, it's just an example, it's like, he will say, not loud, but maybe this was too loud already, you know what I mean? It's just he's not saying loud, so everything comes from the technique of, of PA or microphone. So he's controlling him very good, and uh, 
It wasn't the first uh, Master Plan album. Or yeah, he was. He was. He was singing. Um, and Dwight was. Uh, you know, he was singing the bridges and the chorus together as well. By the way, the lineup uh, with Uli, Uli Kölsch and Gordon Lang, you have contact or maybe plans to uh, have an, an album with, the, with their, their names again? Mm, not really, no. I mean, Jon is uh, still my friend. We always greet, greeting each other, or his wife, or, or when I see him on the festival, we, we drink beer and hugging each other and talking. So, but uh, Jon is complicated. I think if he shows some interest, then of course I would say yes, but. I was pushing him on the uh, Time to be King album so much. Please come back, man. This is magic with you. And we were something, something special. But then the album was out. He, he disappeared again. So we had already two um, announcements playing festivals, and he didn't show up. He just disappeared. He went to Avantasia. Now I understand money. why you want to sing. Yeah, fuck, here. fuck all the scene. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just a passion. I think uh, somehow I like to, uh, maybe maybe people doesn't like my voice, but I like to sing. But I have to say I I, I didn't record much. I, I maybe if I hear myself singing, then I don't like it. But when I'm singing in that moment, I like it. You know? This is the kind of thing, uh, and there's a lot of challenging, still learning process. So I I think I can get better the next one or two years and then make a solo album. That's my plan. So uh, you are a producer, right? Mm -hmm. You are producing. You are producing like lots of bands. I've heard. Uh, also, a friend of mine here in Brazil have recorded with you. Mm -hmm. And have you uh, known or uh, take uh, know, know about a new band? Do you like any new bands that maybe work with you that you would like to tell people that uh, they can look up for that you think they they have an interest in uh, work? Uh -huh. How to say, because I, I, I work with many, many amateurs as well still, and um, maybe the most famous bands I have is uh, Lots of Black from Spain, uh, with Ronnie Romero, who's uh, you know, Richie Black was here. Uh, but he is now out of the band, and they have now a different guy from Argentina, I forgot his name, the, the Dio kind of voice. Yeah, uh, Ronnie wasn't uh, Ronnie Ro Romero talking about. No, he left the band. Really. The new album, Lots of Black, I'm mixing now. It's done. I don't know the guy, sorry. Uh, you know him. You know him. He's a tall guy from Buenos Aires. He sings like a Ronnie James. I think you know him. But also, that's the second singer now. His name is Dino. He's from Yugos, well, not Yugos, but this kind of Croatia era, area. He's on a trans orchestra. He makes some Frontiers records. And you should check him. I think he's getting famous now. Do you think these kids that go there and record with you, do you think they have any chance on this music business today to make a living in music? Um, they always try to ask me if I can help them to make record labels, uh, being interested. And sometimes it works, you know. I mean, just now I recorded an old band from Germany. Uh, the boss is a keyboard player there, and uh, it's a very interesting band. So they have many, many. I would say Celtic elements and some interesting stuff, old school stuff, which I liked a lot. And the lyrics are half German, half old, uh, like you know, from 16th century kind of stuff. And uh, as I told him, hey man, it's not easy. And they found a record deal. So you have to work hard. I think when you have a good product, um, interesting band, and uh, there's always a chance to get a release. But the problem is, most of these bands doesn't, doesn't get advanced money anymore. So that's, that's a problem nowadays. That's not possible, right? That means you have to do it on your own financial. You come to my studio, you have to pay me, you have to do this and do that, and then the record label comes to just put it out. That's it. And maybe a little bit advertisement. That's the only thing that they're investing in nowadays. Um, yeah, the business is totally, totally different now. And, uh, but still, some people are getting successful. And all your fans, if they want to try to reach you, are you on social, social media or something? Um, yeah, on Facebook, you can reach me, or also on Facebook is my Grapo Studios uh, page. So just search for Grapo Studios. And I can give you my card. Sure, sure. I can.
10 years of the game shows here. And uh, yeah, so I think that they're the player. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not so difficult to find me. Do you like uh, watching YouTube videos and watching all those young guitar players uh, shredding? Not so much, no. No, sometimes I get frustrated when they're so good. <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they have a lot of time to rehearse and play, so... Uh, yeah, but uh, I remember when I was in the Halloween, I was rehearsing every day five hours or something. Sometimes longer. And when I was young, I remember my, my longest time of rehearsing or, or training myself was 10 or 12 hours. So till I was sleeping. <laughs> and, uh, but now I don't do this anymore. It's, it's a bit, bit of shame. Um, because of my studio work. I'm working so much for other bands and uh, making money with the studio work basically. It's my main job. You know, it's, it's stupid to say, but master plan is my hobby. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do big business here. Yes, business. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, like I said, everything changed. There are many, many bands are in, my, in the same position, like, you know, like master plan, the same. So everybody has jobs in the band, and uh, nobody can live from the band or alone. It's not possible. Except you here, like, famous, big. Brother, I'm, thank you very much. I'm very honored to thank you. talk to you. Uh, you want to say something about a, a new project or two people will be aware? Oh, uh, yeah. So, like I said, uh, new master plan album end of this year and still thinking about the solo album, which is not being like my um, two previous two albums. I don't want this neoclassical stuff so much anymore. No. I think it will be something special, like uh, not the same like master plan, but between rock, something modern or something that I would love to sing, you know, as much as possible. And then also I'm working with bands, you know, like lots of Black you should check out, it's a good band. Um, I think it's coming out the next four months or something like that. With two new singers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Okay. Valeu. É isso aí, espero que vocês tenham gostado, comentem aí o que vocês acharam. Uh, primeira vez, né, fazendo a entrevista em inglês aqui no, no canal. E agradecer ao Thiago Claro, da TC7, produtora TC7. Ao Eric Claros por ter me ajudado na cobertura e na, na edição também. E uh, comentem se vocês gostaram. De repente, a gente consegue fazer mais entrevistas dessa. Eu gostei muito, cara, muito legal. E até foi interessante que depois da entrevista, ele, tava, ele pegou a guitarra, me mostrou como é que tocava algumas músicas do Halloween. Infelizmente, né, essa parte a gente não conseguiu é, pegar, mas eu estive lá, tive essa oportunidade e valeu muito a pena. Quem sabe numa próxima aí a gente consegue registrar. Quem é guitarrista aí não deixa de conferir o e-book Técnica em Dia, tá o link na descrição do vídeo e a gente pode ir trocando ideia principalmente ali no Instagram. Valeu, até a próxima!